Hey managers of the Super Conference, this is your Commissioner Tyler Burkhardt here with a special edition, a mid-season review to see where you stand amongst the league. Uh, here you will get uh, what, what team in the NFL you're most like and a grade as far as how you're doing so far. Uh, if you want my week, week 6 recap, feel free to check the blog. So let's get started with the AFC East. On top is myself, the Washington Stimulus at 4-2, and two, who I'd say I'm the Baltimore Ravens of the league. I have a weak quarterback, but a strong running game. I've made 17 transactions, active manager, great trade so far, uh, but in order to uh, win, maybe a better quarterback, otherwise really improve the right running back health and, and the question marks that exist, exist there. For the sake of the analysis, I will not give myself a grade. Kill Legend comes in at 4-2. and two. <laughs> i got to say he's the Detroit Lions of the league for many reasons. This year had low expectations. Last year struggled a ton. Hey, he's even got Matthew Stafford and Megatron, so why not? Um, it's only made five transactions, but I thought they've been really smart, especially the backup running back, Murray, and Dallas. Uh, and then he made a great trade for Frank Gore, uh, giving up Peyton Manning and Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. So that was a huge win. Um, However, if he wants to win, I think he's going to have to improve his running back depth a lot more. Uh, however, great, i got to give him an A. Cleveland Shamans comes in at 3-3. Three and three. Classify him as the Pittsburgh Steelers of the Super Conference. He's a great quarterback, a struggling running game that broke out last week, and he's got several wide receiver options. Uh, he's made eight transactions, comments on the blog quite frequently, um, so I'll give him a, a B-plus for a grade. But in order to win, he's got to improve that position where Sean Green's at, that second running back position. New York Yankees comes in at 2-4. and four. Uh, Classify him as the Carolina Panthers. You know, coming in, not a lot of expectations. Kind of a struggling running game right now, uh, but fairly decent passing. Uh, he's made six transactions, comments quite often, updates his team. In order to win, though, he's going to have to downgrade one of his wide receivers and try to find a running back. Um, and he's going to have to give up a lot of his depth, I think, to do that. Otherwise, he'll have to see some other positions go. Overall grade, because of a 2-4 and four record, I'm going to have to give him a B-. minus. So let's head to the AFC West. San Diego Wales is on top at 4-2. and two. Uh, I have to say this is probably the weakest division out of the four. So because of that, I'm going to give them the San Francisco 49ers, who also leads a very, very weak division. Um, you know, another reason why I like this, too, is because I think Aaron is actually probably the most energetic, and I would almost say passionate manager, um, especially the comments he makes in the blogs, So, uh, which is good. I think that's great for our league. Uh, so that's a, a huge compliment to Aaron. Uh, to win, I think he's going to have to trade a quarterback or some of his star talent to improve his running back depth. Uh, still a lot of question marks there. But overall, I'm going to give him an A-. minus. I mean, the fact that he's winning his division is fabulous on his part. Seattle Sasquatches comes in at 3-3. Three and three, Definitely the Houston Texans of our league. We thought Seattle was going to run away with the AFC West. And all of a sudden, we see him one game behind. Um, so that fact, he's like the Texans. 11 transactions, but he picked up Cam Newton and Ben Tate in the draft. So for that reason alone, I'm going to have to give him a B plus, but easily could be worse. Um, to win, he has to improve his wide receiver talent, I think, um, but I don't think he should be in panic mode at all. The LA Seismic Quakes comes in at 2-4. and four. I would have to say he's the Cleveland Browns of our league. Not really good at one position. Hanging around, um, maybe we'll win. Uh, a lot of young talent. Uh, he's made six transactions, and I think he's actually made some fairly decent trades. He picked up A.J. Green, Aaron Hernandez, uh, Green Ellis, and he didn't really trade any hot players. Matt Ryan, D'Angelo Williams, haven't been doing a lot. Uh, in order to win, though, he has to just be smart week to week. He doesn't have a lot of trade value, uh, but he's got to have to get ready in case he starts losing some more games to make sure you make some trades to get two good keepers for the following year. Overall grade, B-. minus. Finally, Fargo and Bargo comes in at 1-5, easily the Denver Broncos of our league. Solid running game, but lack in many other departments who is looking to improve for next year. Uh, his only two transactions failed to fill in his kicker position for a week and made a terrible Manning trade. For that, I'm going to have to give him a C-. Uh, in order to win, well, I don't think he's going to win, 
But if he can improve his keepers for next year, he'll be good to go. Minnesota Bryans comes in at 4-2. and two. Now, see, I would classify him, starting off the NFC East, solid division. He's the San Diego Chargers of the Super Conference. Well-rounded, great running game. Uh, makes every week interesting because very close matches, it seems like he is. Five transactions, but picked up Devery Henderson for those two weeks. That was solid. And has been playing McGahee over Moreno. Also a great decision. Uh, so overall grade, A-, minus. I'll give him. But needs to, once again, improve wide receiver talent. As well as tight end talent. Uh, Green Bay Legends comes in at 3-3. Three and three. Uh, Easily the Dallas Cowboys of our league. Uh, totally rely on the passing game. It's the only time I'll ever compare Aaron Rodgers with Tony Romo. Um, but he's going to have to improve the running back position if he wants to win. He's made 10 transactions, great manager, but made a really bad trade giving up Wells Welker. Thank you very much, Green Bay. Uh, uh, which at the time it was a fair deal, uh, but Wes Welker just came out of nowhere. So overall grade, I'll still give him a B. I think Adam is a great manager. Uh, the Indianapolis Eyeball is also at 3-3, three and three, and they're the Chicago Bears of our uh, Super Conference, and I know he will not like that comparison. But here's why. He's got a great running back in Ray Rice, and he's got all this mediocre talent surrounding him. Uh, he's made eight transactions, comments on the blog several times, but if he wants to win, he has to find more diversity. Uh, you are not going to win this league if you're relying on players that play for the Baltimore Ravens and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Won't happen. So he's going to have to find more diversity and players on other teams. And he has a, some trade tools that he can do that. But overall grade, B. Finally, the New York Blackout comes in at 2-4. and four, The Atlanta Falcons of our league. Uh, great depth, uh, but it's just a team that hasn't clicked. Not off to a, as good of a start as he would have hoped. It's only made, though, two transactions and really no uh, significant trades made and it hasn't shown any urgency. So in order to win, he's going to have to improve that second-tier running back and wide receiver positions. And with four loss, or losses in a row, I'm going to give him a C-plus for a grade. Let's finally move to the NFC West. We're going to go to San Fran Frenzy on top, easily the best team in our division, or in our league, that is. Uh, compare him to the New England Par Patriots. High-powered offense with great depth at all positions. And even despite an injury to Charles, he's done a great job. So i got to give him an A for his grade. In order to win, just keep maintaining that momentum, Josh, and you'll be fine. Uh, the San Antonio Toros comes in at 4-2. and two. Uh, The Cincinnati Bengals of our division. You know, here's a team that, you know, just doesn't have a lot of huge star talent, low expectations, young players, but they got a winning record. Interesting how that happens. Uh, he's made 10 transactions, very active, and made some okay trades. Not great, but okay. Um, but So overall, I think A-. I think uh, Tim has done actually a really good job. Uh, he's going to have to, though, to look to get a second keeper because right now, other than Ryan Matthews, I don't see anybody that he can keep. So that's going to be an issue, so he'll have to look to do that. Oakland Velos comes in at 2-4. and four. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars of our league, now, not because of their pa uh, <laughs> passing by any means, because I know he's got Tom Brady, but he relies on one player to help him win. You know, that's Jaguars depends on Jones Drew. Velos depends on Tom Brady. He's only made three transactions, no huge moves. Probably the biggest move is Victor Cruz pickup. So he's going to have to make some more moves if he wants to win and try to find a more reliable running game. So overall grade... Average, I'll give him a B minus. Finally, Portland Car Ram Rod, two and four. And I gotta say, the perfect team for him is the New York Jets. Um, Mark, I think, is a little ignorant on his talent. Uh, say that respectfully, but um, I called it at the beginning that Arian Foster was gonna be, as far as value at the end of the season, no more than late first, early second. And he should have traded him for running back depth, and I think it's almost too late to do that. But I still think he has a small chance of still making the playoffs because he does, you know, have those stars on his team. Um, so we'll see what he does. He has eight transactions with Tebow and Terrain were good, but in order to win, needs to make some trades. Bottom line. So overall grade, I'm going to give him a C uh, until he can improve. So overall, that's the recap. Uh, we'll see what the second half has in store for all of us. This is Tyler Burkhardt here. Game on.